Ladies and gentlemen, it might be a week late, but finally the McLaren 720S GT3 Evo has finally landed inside the iRacing Sim. It kind of came as a little bit of a surprise to me, uh, hence why you're getting a second upload of the day. But yeah, is this thing going to be good fun? Is it going to be my GT3 main car uh, throughout the final season of 2024? If you're not already, please do make sure you get yourself subscribed as well. We're trying to hit 15,000 subs here on the channel. But yeah, let's see what this car's made of. And I'll let you know whether I think it's going to be the right choice for you. Well, here we are then, sitting in the car for the very first time. I must admit, yeah, I'm quite looking forward to this one. This might, might become my new daily GT3 car inside the iRacing Sim. Of course, we've obviously got uh, the rear view camera, as to seemingly every modern race car now. Uh, I don't believe the dash on the other side will work, though, inside iRacing, because uh, they are never coded in. But quickly, obviously, we need to listen to this thing with a 4-litre V8, if I remember correctly. Sounds, you know, it, it's not the most high-pitched car in the world. Obviously, these things... I mean, they rev up over 7,000, but they're not the craziest car in terms of the engine note or anything like that. Uh, I'm weirdly, immediately, I'm noticing I feel almost tipped forward uh, in my seat, which is a little bit of a strange phenomenon. Uh, but there we are. Uh, that'll just be something to try and get used to. But visibility at the front uh, is absolutely fantastic as well there. So, yeah, like I said, this, this kind of first few laps uh, for me are basically probably going to decide... Uh, whether we're going to try and use this thing over the course of 2024 Season 4. Yes, I might be a bit of a sheep. I might follow the crowd. And, of course, obviously, it gives us a bit of a chance to have a look at the all-new and updated Zolda circuit as well. Because, yeah, I never got to cover this place uh, in the videos we made last week as well there. So, all good fun. And, yeah, we'll wait and see as to how we get on immediately. I'm noticing, you know, this thing feels very, very stable um, it also feels like the downforce is working fantastically well as well on that front end. You know, this thing, kind of when you look at it in terms of the GT3 cars, it looks like an aerodynamic monster. You know, going to the Spa 24 a couple of months ago as well, obviously. Although McLaren never really ended up in much of the fight at the front of the field inside that race. Uh, this thing was still probably, I would say, the coolest looking car at the course of the event. Is that a controversial statement? I don't really know, but immediately, obviously, we've got to remember, uh, you know, setups and things like that will change the way this car handles. Of course, it is mid-engined, uh, so it's more likely to, you know, be going up sort of against the Lamborghini, the Audi, uh, and things like that, which generally aren't my favourite cars in terms of the GT3 class. I usually, if it's my personal choice, uh, will go with BMW uh, or the Mercedes. I like a front-engine car, you know, get the weight over the front. Uh, and really then kind of, you know, deal with the understeer because that's just the way I like to drive. Um, but more recently, uh, anybody that's kind of come around to one of our live streams and things like that, when I've done some of the longer races, Eugene has been convincing me uh, to use the Porsche a bit more. And I must admit, I've enjoyed that a little bit more than I expected I would. So obviously it will kind of depend on what my mates want to use as well when we do some of our endurance racing. But yeah, I, I think we'll, we'll, give, we'll probably give this car a run throughout the course of the season. I still need to try the Corvette at some point. I just wasn't really playing iRacing much uh, when that car released, so never really even gave it a go uh, inside the sim either. But yeah, I need to, you know, kind of fill out my GT3 collection and maybe uh, in the not too distant future, if it's something you guys would like to see as well, I might do like a full GT3 rundown. You know, kind of a bit more of a beginner's guide, uh, but so you guys can kind of see which GT3 car uh, you would like to take on as well inside the sim. But, yeah, immediately, immediately I'm feeling pretty comfortable uh, with the car. Uh, it seems to be fairly sensitive over curbs. Immediately you just see through to someone. They're getting a little bit of a snap there. Uh, just obviously as you kind of come off the other side there. It kind of snaps in a fairly predictable way, though. Just kind of squats and rotates a little bit out on the exit of the turn. But again, you know... A lot of that will kind of be fixed with tuning and things, but otherwise it feels very, very good. It doesn't feel particularly heavy. It feels quite light as a car. Uh, so, you know, I think that will mean uh, that generally the feeling over the curbs, I mean, through there, they are big, big curbs around this. That's probably the biggest and most daunting ones uh, that you'll deal with around Zolder, but 
There are also probably, you know, some of the biggest ones you'll deal with uh, inside the iRacing sim as well. Whatsoever. And you can see it does, you know, it rotates around quite nicely. Immediately I'm getting a nice little level of responsiveness uh, from the car as well on corner exit. You know, it seems to be able to put the power down. Uh, and it seems to, you know, especially on the brakes, I'm so happy. I know, looking back now, it was probably about three years ago. But the the way the fact that ABS now works in iRacing makes things so much more enjoyable as well. Because uh, I remember, yeah, all the GT3 cars, you were having to drive them really weird and weirdly. Uh, as you can just see there, a little bit of a nick over the sausage. Could be, you know, it, it will bottom out. It will kind of throw itself out a little bit more if you unsettle it too much as well at the end of the day. Um, but that's to be expected from one of these mid or rear engine GT3 cars. You know, they're not quite like the front engine cars, you know, that eat curbs for breakfast and things like that, like I enjoy in the Mercedes or the BMW. But they are certainly still, you know, an experience of their own and generally are a little bit more responsive through the corners, which I understand that a lot of people quite like as well. Generally, I like a car with a bit more understeer. Uh, but I understand, obviously, that isn't really a normal aspiration for a racing driver. It's probably why I like TCR cars so much and things like that as well. As you can just see, you know, as you come off those curbs, it definitely will bog down a little bit. Uh, you know, you can hear that traction control working quite aggressively uh, at the rear of the car. But it doesn't seem to be too invasive either, which I guess is quite nice. You really don't want to use first gear, though, uh, even through that slow speed chicane. It is not really finding anything on the exit and just kind of bogging down and tripping itself over but it is yeah it's working it's working quite nicely this car and you know ultimately as you would come to expect with iRacing I know I say it every single time um but it, I've never driven this car in real life I probably never will drive this car in real life but it feels believable it feels plausible uh, as to what you would expect from the car as well there and ultimately you know that is the most important thing at the end of the day when you jump into a new car in sim you want it to feel believable you want it to feel real as such as well and so far this thing is is doing that i say it's it's a bit more oversteery than i would really like we'll try and go for kind of like a full push mode attacking lap uh in a second so you guys can kind of hear it as well but you can kind of just see through those first couple of turns still it's probably moving around a bit more underneath me than I personally would like in a car. Um, but, you know, we, we kind of knew coming into it, didn't we? If you're going to be using this car, it's going to be more like the Porsche or the Audi uh, or something like that. Or even though, I think, honestly... Whoa! <laughs> that was not what I meant to do. I think, honestly, weirdly handles probably most closely to the Ferrari. Which I guess kind of makes sense as they are, you know, two of the most recent... Uh, GT3 additions to the game that obviously, you know, with this platform as well, you know, I would expect the Corvette to be a very, very different tail, but yeah, I reckon actually, apart from the Ferrari's ability to eat curbs, uh, which has always been the same right since the original um, Ferrari GTE car, I believe it was, that came first in Sim, you know, all of them have been able to, you know, Montreal, for example, or even Zolder, I guess, have always kind of been where the Ferrari's been at in a happy hunting ground as well. Um, but, yeah, I would just say it's probably slightly less good in that regard. But still feels pretty good for the most part. Let's do a proper sort of attack lap then. And we'll kind of see what we're looking at here. And I've got, also got to add, Zolder, fantastic. I'm, I'm liking the new version of the circuit as well. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> Five 
final corner. Final corner, I might have messed it up. I knew, I knew I shouldn't have brought it down that one extra gear as well there. But I've got to admit, that car, I'll, I'll be honest, you know, I was kind of excited to see what the McLaren would be like in sim and everything like that. But I wasn't really going into it expecting uh, that it would be the car of choice for me. But ultimately, it is a very, very fun experience. It's a fun, stable platform. Uh, that I think will, you know, as you go to other tracks that might be a bit more aggressive with the curb, get it wrong, it's going to absolutely punish you. Keep it within its comfort zone, though, and you might be all right. So I think it's going to favour drivers uh, that are a little bit more smooth. Uh, like I said, you know, like a bit of oversteer in the car, but can kind of lean in and around the traction control as well there. But, yeah, let me know whether you're going to be picking up this car uh, down in the comments below as well. I would say, yeah, if you're a fan of the Ferrari or the Porsche or something like that, and you want a new GT3 car uh, to take on in the sim, McLaren is probably going to be a pretty good buy as well. I'm going to try and run it through some of VRS this season. I haven't quite decided exactly uh, what series I'm going to be doing as well inside the sim. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching the second upload of today. Uh, we were, I actually already, yeah, got a video sorted. Uh, and then, of course, yeah, they've announced the car as well. But yeah, that's going to do us for this one. And we'll be back very soon with more sim racing content.